Hello everybody, is everyone alright? Uh, I'm alright, thank you. My name is Ben, and uh, today I want to talk about my Black Spine Penguin Classics collection. <laughs> collection. It is a collection, yes. So I, I am a naughty girl with a bad habit, a bad habit for going into secondhand bookshops and charity shops, and if I see a Black Spine Penguin Classic, then I will invariably, inevitably, indubitably, uh, pick it up. And uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, um, sort of adding to the ones that I had before, and now it sort of dawned on me that I do have a collection. Um, yeah, so they're all up here, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you properly in a minute. They're all in a, um, a repurposed, <laughs> upcycled uh, old kitchen cabinet. So we redid the kitchen and I nabbed one of the uh, cabinets because I needed some more bookshelves. And uh, I've decided to put uh, all my Black Spine Penguin Classics in them. So if you want to just get to me talking, going through the books, I'm, I'm going to put timestamps below, because I know that some people are like, GET ON WITH IT! So yeah, so if you want me to get on with it, then there's timestamps below. But I do just want to do a brief preamble about about them and about the collection and stuff. Yeah, so I like... I like... I like them! <laughs> I do like them. I like... they're very sort of aesthetically pleasing. There's something iconic about them. Um, and, you know, I, I like to read classic stuff, and yeah. There are things about them that some people don't like. I mean, they do scupper and and sort of uh, disintegrate fairly. Well, not disintegrate, but they do kind of, you know, they're not they're not very sturdy, you know, and they crease and all that kind of stuff. But I do like a good battered book. <laughs> um, I, do, I, do, I don't break spines or anything like that, but I do like a battered book, um, especially if you buy them secondhand, you know, and you sort of see the life that they've had before. I, I do quite like that. Um, so yeah, so I've just been uh, collecting them, and the thing about this. Uh, video is that I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone um, in that I, because they're in this thing, which I'll show you in a minute, it's very easy for me to forget what I have and what I have. So part of what this video is is going to be me to basically s doing a stock take, basically, um, of things and kind of just going through what I have, what I don't, maybe what I can get rid of, um, and what's missing, basically. I don't buy Penguin Classics as a matter of form for classics books. So for instance, I mean my Jane Austens, the Jane Austen Penguin Classic ones, they have these paintings of Regency women on the front. And I don't know, it just makes them look a bit dirgy, you know? And if Jane Austen is anything, she's not dirgy. So I've gone with what they're called, what they're called, um, Penguin Modern, Penguin English Library ones. Um, Cause they're just nicer. I don't like the Middlemarch cover. And I'm not really a fan of the War and Peace cover either. And where I can now, I do about 90% of all the classic books, um, and actually all the books that I get actually, um, I get second hand now. I don't really see the point of spending eight ninety nine for a Charles Dickens novel. I just it's a bit weird to me. Unless unless it's a present. Or the other reason I might buy one of these, you know. Eight ninety nine or nine ninety nine from a Waterstones or whatever. Um is if it, if it's a big chunker if it's like over a thousand pages um then because these do scupper very easily and stuff um then you know i kind of want it i want them to last as long as they can so that's that's kind of another reason but yes right so this is where they are being housed in this repurposed um upcycled kitchen cabinet and as you can see i mean it's not it is not ideal to say the least i mean this is this is um these are two things deep. Um, and it's just not really ideal. So hence why I need to uh, take them all out and just uh, see what's going on, because yes, I've kind of forgotten. So let's do that, shall we? <laughs> okay, here we are. So I'm on my bed and I have them all here. And uh, I'm going to make two piles. I'm going to make a a red pile and a to be red pile. And uh, uh, so there's not going to be any kind of order to this, but uh, we're just going to go through and uh, see what happens. So I, immediately I can see my Charles Dickens. Ugh, Charles Dickens. So I've got six of them. Great expectations. Love this. I think this is a really good one to start with Charles Dickens because it's not too long and it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I've got Bleak House. Hard times, times is hard. David Copperfield, um, this is a good one. 
It's I think it's his longest, I think. Um, yeah, this and Great Expectations, they kind of have a similar vibe to them. And I think they're both, they're both in the first person, I think. Uh, Martin Chuzzlewit. <laughs> and I haven't read this yet, um, so I need to. Also, I will just say, I really love these... I really like this uh, cover design for the Dickens, these sort of um, going with the original illustrations, I really like that. So next we have Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy! Uh, I've got uh, Tess of the Dolbevols and Far From Mood and Crude. Um, I have not read these yet. I sort of, I need to be in the right mood, because they are depressing, aren't they? Hello! Yes. And then this one is just um, a load of cows ploughing in the field. Uh, ooh, so we have uh, Treasure Island. Love this, uh, by Robert Louis Stevenson. Pieces of Ape! Uh, the Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I I really, I was really surprised by this, actually. <laughs> right, look at him. I'm not surprised that so many people love it, because it is a really, really fabulous read, and it's really kind of like, it's bonkers, it's absolutely bonkers. Uh, so E.M. Forster, I've got a couple of his books. So we've got a few of his books here. So I've got Morris, or as I like to call it, Go Get Yourself a Gardener. We got to Howard's End. Oh, hi, yeah. Um, yeah, really, really fabulous. Uh, really, um, great, great story. This really, really great story. And uh, recently, I read uh, A Room with a View. There we go. There she is. Um, I loved, I loved, really, really loved this a lot. I really, really loved it a lot. So I've got a Bronte here. Where's, where's the other one? Right. So the Brontes. Um, so I have, uh, good old Jane Eyre. Hello. Oh. Um, this is just like game changing, amazing, isn't it? Good old Jane Eyre. And then I have uh, Wuthering, Wuthering, Wuthering Heights. Um, this is a weird cover choice. What? Having having read it, uh, that that doesn't really scream Wuthering Heights to me. But um, but uh, yeah, I mean Wuthering Heights is absolutely batshit bonkers. <laughs> and then Jane Eyre. I mean Jane Eyre is just gold, gorgeous. I love I love it a lot. I love I love it. Um, I do have Tenant of Wildfell thingy, um, but just not in a Penguin classic. But yes, we love we love the Brontes. Uh, where next? Oh, hello. Got good old Madame Bovary. Yoo-hoo! Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. Yeah, I wasn't really a fan of this. It was kind of, it gets very, very histrionic and very kind of like... Aah! Oh, I should have said, yeah, so um, at the moment, my current reading is this. The Decameron by... Uh, Boccaccio. So you have the Divine Comedy by Dante, obviously. This is the Human Comedy. Um, and the reason that I'm reading this at the moment is because I want to get to, um, very soon, The Canterbury Tales. I haven't read The Canterbury Tales yet. Um, and I need to. <laughs> so, yes, I mean, this is this is an interesting one because it's kind of, it's an, ab an abridged version and it's also kind of translated. And yeah, I'm sort of interested to get to this um, in the next month or so. Um, yeah. Heard some good things about it, and it's very, 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 very influential in terms of English literature and stuff with Shakespeare and all that. Okay, so we've got Wives and Flipping Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. It took me six months to read this. It's a bit boring, I have to say. I mean, especially with this cover. Hello, ladies. Um, what's her name? What's the protagonist's name? Molly! Yeah. Molly! Uh, okay, so this one, I haven't read this yet. This is Stendhal, The Red and the Black. Um, I found them. <laughs> You're right! Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a sort of random one. However, I am reading, at the moment, I'm reading through um, In Search of Lost Time uh, by Proust. And uh, he, this author kind of crops up now and again. It sort of gets mentioned now and again. So, um, yeah, interested in Stendhal. Sticking with 19th century, uh, Vanity Fair by Thackeray. Um, so this is a bit of a whopper. Um, there's bits of it which are really, really funny. There's bits of it which I wasn't so keen on. Um, Thackeray himself is a bit of a, like, a mm, uh, bloke. Yeah, I mean, Becky Sharp is one of the great characters, isn't she? She's just, like, she's great. So, yeah, bits of it I liked, bits of it I, I didn't for obvious reasons. But, um, yeah, Vanity Fair. There we go. Oh, hello. Right, so we have um, Moby Dick, Moby Dick by Herman Melville. It is hard going. It's uh, an encyclopedia um, slash novel at times, um, but yeah, it's it is what it is. Moby Dick. I do love this cover. Frankenstein, massive game changer by Mary Shelley. Um, 
Uh, I love this. I mean, apart from this stupid thing, I love. I do love this picture choice. But yeah, in terms of science fiction, in terms of horror as well, I mean, this is just. Um, it's kind of set up a lot of a lot of things, isn't it? Yes, good old Mary. Also, he's a thick monster, isn't he? <laughs> so another kind of genre-y one. We've got um, the Hand of the Baskervilles by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. <clears throat> Uh, this is the only kind of uh, Sherlocky book that I've read. I haven't read this yet, so I've got the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> the Count of Monte Cristo, um, obviously massive, massive twelve hundred page whopper. So yeah, I saw this in a second hand bookshop, and uh, it's really good condition. I mean, I, I'm not really sure how if it's actually been read because um, it's really like yeah, I don't think it's been read this this book, even though it was in a second hand bookshop. Um, because like it's not really the spine isn't broken, the pages aren't really. It, there's no real sort of hint of, you know, it being read. So, yeah, I basically got a store new book for two quid or something, which is very nice. So yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to get to this this summer. I think. Um, yeah, I'd like to get to this this summer. Um, maybe it's my. I don't think it'll be my birthday month project book this year, but um, but yeah, Alexander Dumas. Oh, let's do some Russians, shall we? Shall we? So Tolstoy, I've got Anna Karenina. Um, she packed her trunk. Um, I li I really love this. This cover, I've seen um, good old Wordsworth classics use this cover. I think they've used it for the Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. Um, but uh, yes, I've seen I've seen this decolletage before. So yeah, I I mean Anna Karenina is. It's really, really fabulous. I think it's really accessible as well. There are boring bits. The, the farming chapters are a little bit boring, but um, but no, I thought it was it was really, really good. Some the thing I love about Russian literature, nineteenth century Russian literature, is the um, the meaning of life perorations at the end. They there's some really good conclusion conclusion bits where they sort of talk about um, the meaning of life or whatever. Um, so yeah. We love Anna Karenina. I do have War and Peace. That's one of these things where I have um, another edition. I've got the vintage, the uh, the vintage version of that. Okay, then we have some Dostoevsky. So <laughs> I've got this, uh, Crime and Punishment. Um, this book I've had, I think this is the oldest book I've got here. Um, I've had this for 15 years, I want to say. I am very much due a reread of this, of Crime and Punishment. Hello. And yes, I kind of want to do that very soon, I think. I've decided. I have decided. And then the other Dostoevsky book I've got is The Brothers Karamazov. Brothers Karamazov. Fabulous painting choice, uh, painting classics. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just, uh, this is one of the, the masterworks of literature, isn't it? I, I mean, I think so. Um, it's kind of, it's everything. It's about about the nature of evil, it's about God, it's about um, love to a certain extent, it's, you know, it's about family and stuff, it's just, it's very, very, um, uh. now, I will just say, this is an example of um, their new, Penguin Classics' new design, cover design. They've done away with the orange stuff, and they've done away with the script font, and they've gone with these kind of block white letters and this sort of white band. And I don't like it. <laughs> I don't really like it. It's kind of just, I can sort of see why they've done it, you know, because it sort of makes it more clear. Um, but I don't know, it's just not as interesting f for me. It's not as kind of, I don't know. Like if they, maybe if they'd kept the orange, the orange on the spine, I don't know. It's just not, it's just not my bag. So, I mean, that's another reason for me not to buy these brand new, because I don't like the um, the new cover aesthetic. But, um, I mean, it doesn't, that, well, and none of that matters, obviously, but it's just, um, it's just, you know, I, I prefer, I prefer this, this thing. But yeah, but no, I mean, the Brothers Karamazov is pretty uh, hefty. Yes, shall we go? Oh, so we've got some tw uh, 20th century uh, Russian classic here. We've got the Master of Marguerite R, uh, by Bulgakov. Absolutely bonkers. Absolutely, uh, just... What? I haven't read this yet, but oh my goodness. I'm very, very looking forward to it. The Origin of Species, Charles Darwin. Look at this. This cover is, like... I am obsessed with this. This That is amazing cover. Yeah, I'm just really, really fascinated to, to get to this, because this is kind of just, like... 
And we can talk about one of the most important books ever. This is kind of one of them, isn't it? Um, so yeah, we shall see, Mr. Darwin, what you have to say for yourself. <laughs> I completely forgot that I had this. Uh, this is another um, new design. <laughs> Why do I have this? So I've got the Poetics of Space uh, thingy. I, I'm not going to pronounce his name right. Um, yeah, why do I have this? I mean, this is um, this is a book about um, architecture and design and architecture and um, design um, and where we put things in our home, basically. But there's a kind of like a philosophical edge to it. Um, and yeah, when I heard about it, I was like, "Ooh, yes, I quite fancy that." But uh, but yeah. Why do I have it? <laughs> uh, okay, and then... Oh yes, so we have uh, The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe. 18th century um, little novella. Yeah, so this is uh, this is an example of an old an older version. This is, I think, from the 80s, I want to say. Yeah, from the 80s. Um, so they used to they used to just have this sort of design cover, and then they used to have this kind of... I don't know what the colours correspond to, but there's different colours. I've got a few more. So yeah, so The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe. It was all right. It's kind of a. It's about this guy who gets obsessed with this girl, and it all it all goes wrong. The newer version. I was hoping because when you buy second-hand books online, it's kind of Russian roulette. What kind of arrives at your door? And I was hoping for the the newer version, which has the guy doing that. Um, but yeah, but no, this is what arrived. Uh, Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. Um, there's another one of these eighties um, editions. Um, yeah, I really, I really, I found this fascinating. I really, really found this fascinating. I really, I really liked it. It's very kind of cynical towards human nature and society and stuff. It's really, really interesting. I really, really liked it. Um, oh, I do have uh, Don Quixote by Cervantes. This is another whopper, and it's one of these ones which I bought new um, because I was kind of just uh, aware that it was going to get bashed about a bit. Although it's, I've not, I've not been too. Uh, cruel to it. Uh, so yeah, so 17th century, uh, same time as Shakespeare, um, and this is a really entertain. well the first half <laughs> I think is really really entertaining and funny, um, and the second half has a really interesting meta element to it. Um, yeah, very very influential game changer book, this. Uh, sticking with the 17th century, so <laughs> right, so I've got this, The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. <laughs> Uh, right, this is a massive, massive whopper. It's a big epic poem, um, and I, I had a go. I mean, I got about a hundred pages in, um, well, ninety pages in, and um, but this, I mean, this edition is they've kept the original spelling of things. So, like a V is spelt, no, a U is spelt with a V, and a J is spelt with something else. And it's just, you have to really kind of be, you have to really sort of focus, focus when you read this. Um, but yeah, it's about this, uh, it's about this sort of gallant knight. It's got interesting coming after uh, Cervantes, but it's about this gallant knight and sort of, um, you know, going on all, all these adventures and things with monsters and stuff. But yeah, I hope, hopefully I can get, I can get round to it this year. I can finish it this year, hopefully. The Fairy Queen. Okay, another random one. Uh, this is Ethics by Spinoza. <laughs> this is a very, very uh, slim book. I got this because I read The Razor's Edge by uh, Somerset Maugham, and in that, one of the characters, he kind of goes on this reading binge, and this is one of the books that he reads. And I was interested to kind of... Ooh. Hello. Um, yeah, I was interested. I mean, it's fairly... Um, this is kind of... Uh, uh, what's it called? Like pantheism. It's um, the idea that God is the universe is God, or like everything is God. I don't know. Yeah, interest. I'm um, sort of interested. <laughs> uh, and then from philosophy to political philosophy, this is the most recent one that I've gotten. Uh, I got Thomas Hobbes' Leviathan. <laughs> uh, why did I get this? Well, uh, yeah, um, I was in the secondhand bookshop and I saw it, and I was like, oh, let's just let's just take it. Do you like that? Me look. Uh... This is basically the. Um, do what you're told. I think his opposite is Rousseau, I've, I've read. Um, so if I read this, and I'll read Rousseau, The Social Contract by Rousseau. Um, but yes, interesting. So I think most of what I have now is ancient, ancient classics. So I've got the Mahabharata. <laughs> uh, yeah, I found this in an Oxfam. 
weirdly enough. I want to read this, but I'm this is the one that I'm most intimidated by because it's I mean it's a big whopper and also just I mean I know nothing about about any of this stuff. I really, really want to get get to this. I mean when I did I did a classics I want to read in 2022 video, and this is kind of like the one that I want to read this year. If I read nothing else, I want to read this. But I am just really, really intimidated by it. I forgot I <laughs> I forgot that I had this, so um I've got the Quran. Um yeah, this was in the uh, randomly in the second hand bookshop in my town. Um yeah, I'd like to I mean I I would really love to read read through this. I'll have to sort of see what the what the etiquette is for talking about the Quran, you know, on a silly booktube channel like mine. Um you know, because uh you know, for obvious reasons, but um no, I'm I am interested because I've heard like the as literature the the poetry of it is beautiful and and things and it's not I mean it's not long it's not like the bible it's not like the bible or anything so um yeah but I will, I will have to sort of um yeah just sort of do a bit of research on what the etiquette is on talking about you know religious texts like this um but yeah but no I'm I'm very eager to get to it oh uh forgot about this so I've got the story of Hong Gildong um I love this cover. This is a great cover. This is a very, very short book. This is um, a... this is Korean mythology, I think. Uh, very, very short, very kind of interesting. It's kind of like um, the English equivalent is Robin Hood, although that's kind of... it's... Uh, I mean, this isn't a lot more kind of magical and he's got like magic powers and stuff. Okay, so I think now we're just in ancient uh, Rome and ancient Greece. Um, so first of all, I've got this. I've got Plotinus, the Aeneids, the Aeneids, the Aeneids. This is very, this is philosophy. It's very kind of uji bougie philosophy. So I've got Ovid, Metamorphoses. This is a very, very old um, edition. When was this published? Yeah, 19, okay, 1980. This is a, um, a prose translation of um, the Metamorphoses. And it's all right. I mean, it's, it's fine. I kind of, I do want a, a verse translation. I think the newer... The newer one, I don't know who's translated it, but the newer uh, Pokemon Classic is a verse translation, so I'll be keen to get to that. But this is, I mean, yeah, interesting, <laughs> interesting one. And then I do have, I've got this, St. Augustine Confessions, which I tried to read. I got about halfway and then I DNF'd it. Um, this, this is kind of beyond the pale, I think. This is kind of falling apart. Uh, oh, it's interesting in that it's kind of like the link between... Um, sort of, you know, Roman mythology and Christianity. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as a reading experience, I just sort of, it, yeah, I was like, why am I reading this? So, yeah, St. Like Augustine. I need to sort of work out what I'm going to do with this copy, though, because it is falling apart um, as I speak. Okay, so now some uh, tragedians. Um, so I've got Aeschylus, Prometheus Bound and other plays. I've got Sophocles, um, the Theban plays, uh, Oedipus Rex, which, an Oedipus Rex, Oedipus Rex is kind of a big game changer in terms of drama. Oh yeah, I've got The Golden Ass! <laughs> the Golden Ass! This is an early novel. This is another one from the 80s. Another one from the 80s is this. I've got um, Hesiod and Theo Theognis. Um, yeah, I'm interested in reading uh, Hesiod because he's kind of like the, the next one along from Homer. Um, so yeah, interested in reading that. I've got Virgil, of course. The Aeneid. Um, this is all right. I mean, I I love the first half or the first third with the uh, with Dido and him going to the um, the underworld and stuff. But the actual battle for Rome is a little bit boring. To be honest with you. Um, but no, it's an important book to to have, an important book to own. Um, so there we go. Oh, good old Sappho We've got stung with love poems and fragments by Sappho. And I mean, the poetry is like really really fabulous, and the imagery is really really fabulous. Uh, another 80s one, we've got Horace, complete um, odes and epodes, carpe diem, and all that. Uh, well, nearly there. And then I've got uh, Poetics by Aristotle. Um, this is kind of uh, how to do drama. <laughs> yeah, interesting. And it's a good counterpoint to uh, Plato. I've got a couple of Platos here. So I've got The Republic. Um, I haven't read all of this. I've only read the um, the art chapter. So I'd... It would be interesting to read the, the whole thing. 
Um, then the other one I have is the Symposium, which is wild. This is fabulous. I love I love this a lot. It's really, really funny. Really, really funny. I was really surprised by that. Yeah, basically them, a group of guys all sitting around talking about love um, in increasingly ridic ridiculous ways. And last of all, we're taking it back um, to Homer. Uh, yeah, got uh, these are both the Robert Fagel's translations of Homer. So we've got the Iliad and the Odyssey. Um, this has obviously been a library book before. Um, yeah, I really like the Robert Tran Robert Fagels as a translator. I think he's I think he's really ace. He did the um, the Aeneid as well um, that I've got. Um, and yeah, rage goddess, sing the rage of Peleus' son Achilles. Why don't you do that? So we've got eighteen of these books that I've yet to read, which is interesting. Um, and the rest I have. So that's good to know. Um, yeah, interesting. <laughs> Poetics of Space, why have I got this? So that's good to know <laughs> that I've got all these books. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to put them all back, I guess, um, and put the ones that I haven't read in front. So yes, thank you for watching if you've been watching. Um, I shall leave it there. And uh, I'm going to uh, now take all these back to the, the uh, bookshelf and uh, see what happens. Goodbye.